interesting that recently, very senior members of the bar, we all know them. They are fond of being on um, uh, politics today. They were commenting on cases that are before either the Court of Appeal or the Supreme Court. And, and this wasn't the case in the past. Uh, we, we are saying under your tenor, yes. will there be a procedure where you bring some of them to justice? Because they ought not to, because their comments and their analysis tend to influence the final outcome of those cases. And in most instances tend to uh, bring about injustice. Because they are not aware, they are not says of the facts that are before their lordships. Yes. But they will go out there, instead of arguing the cases in the, in the court, they will go and sit down on television and be arguing the cases on television. And for the junior lawyers, the younger ones who are coming up, they are now beginning to think that that is the norm. If under your tenor, any of those senior uh, lawyers, or, you know, brought to book to say you cannot, when the case has, uh, is in court, it has become a, a, the matter is down subjudice. So if the court can invite or even the NJC can discipline a senior uh, 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 lawyer who is fond of sitting down to analyze cases that are yet to be decided upon on television, in social media and all that, I think it will serve as a deterrent and will also be help to bring back the integrity of the judiciary and the judicial system that we are talking about. Uh, put the question. Will the Senate approve the nomination for confirmation of Honorable Justice Kuridad Kekere Kung for appointment as Chief Justice of Nigeria? Those in favor say aye. aye. Those again say nay. The I serve it. The nomination of Honorable Justice Kudirat Kekerekung for appointment as Chief Justice of Nigeria is hereby approved. I think the first thing in giving my CV, I said one of the things that I'm known for is integrity. I'm also known for being strict on discipline. And therefore, in order to ensure that the integrity of the, of the judiciary is maintained, I will ensure that the code of conduct is fully complied with. I will ensure that there is zero tolerance for corruption. I am of the view that many matters should terminate at the Court of Appeal, especially into interlocutory appeals. There's also a situation where pre-election matters come all the way to the Supreme Court. Whereas in national and state assembly elections, the substantive elections terminate at the Court of Appeal. I think all pre-election matters should terminate at the Court of Appeal. So many matters need to terminate at the Court of Appeal so that the Supreme Court can really live up to its designation as a policy court. Thank you very much. Um, I don't believe enlarging the number of justices is the solution because the cases are so many. The backlog is tremendous. So even if you increase the number of justices, I believe that sometimes it gives the impression that, oh, there are more justices, so we can even find more appeals. It's more about the jurisdiction of the courts, which I think should be limited. Um, another area for upholding the integrity of the judiciary is that there is a need also to insulate the judiciary from external influence. We are very grateful to His Excellency, the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, President Ahmed Bola Tinubu, and the National Assembly for passing the bill that increased salaries of judicial officers. We are very grateful. 
but there is still a way to go. Because when we are talking about the integrity of the judiciary, it involves not only the take-home pay, it also involves infrastructure that we are working with. What is available? Is it conducive? These are all things that have an effect on how the judiciary performs and what so on that, in that regard, I will be pushing for still more better welfare for judicial officers so that they too can perform at their optimum best.